Hey guys, this is my Vogelzang 3200 wood stove. And today I'm going to go through a few things that I wish I knew before about the wood stove and a few things that I wish I knew before I fired it up for the first time. Things that weren't in the manual that should be in the manual, in my opinion. So for starters, we're going to go over things that uh, should have been in the manual that weren't in the manual that were kind of very important issues. Um, one is this door here. So what I had found was this door was not, these nuts were not tight. And so when I shut the door, this stove was not getting a good seal around the outside. It was leaving a little bit of an air gap, which allowed for the fire to kind of take off on me and make it more uncontrollable. So uh, there's, there's three different nuts or four different nuts here. Uh, this one here all the way in, that one just keeps the, the handle in place. You want to just make sure that's snugged up all the way. And then I don't know why they have two nuts on here. A lock nut would have been sufficient on the end here or, or just a regular nut. Uh, but you want to make sure you get this adjusted properly so that when you shut the door, you can't, you don't want to bottom this out really easily, right? So I've got it. So when I push down, I mean, I could keep pushing more and more before I hit the bottom, but, but uh, I'm able to get a nice snug door this way. Before, I could just easily go like this, and it'd be all the way down, and it'd latch, right? And that left the air gap. So that's the first tip I'd give you. The second one is I would look inside the wood stove and, and make sure that these are set properly, right? So you've got two different things in here going on. you got this, like, fiber board here, uh, right here. You're going to want to make sure that that's uh, pushed back all the way. So you, you look in the back, in the very back, you can see where it ends. If I pull this out a little bit, you'll see a little gap back there. So basically what you want to do is you want to pull it out till you can see a gap in the far back. Let me see if I can point to it here. So right back there, you want to see if there's a gap along that back there. You want to see a little bit of a gap and then push it just enough to cover that gap and to kind of seal that up. So that's how I have found to set that properly. Then the other thing is that blanket up top there. I have two of these wood stoves. One of these came with this blanket almost all the way to this wall here, and it was choking it out, not allowing it to get the smoke out of the wood stove. So to push that blanket back, you have to come in from the top. I'm not going to take the chimney off. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, you got to take that off, and then you got to pull the blanket back. And so if you look down in there, you'll see if the blanket's too far forward, you'll see a gap that goes all the way down. Well... I pulled it back to cover that gap, and that was enough to give me um, sufficient gapage down here to get the smoke out of the firebox. So as you can see, I've got a couple of different fans going on my wood stove, and I've also got this goofy little thing on the back here called the barometric damper. So one of the things I was having an issue with with this, with this wood stove was even after I got the door seal figured out, um, my pipe is a little longer, which gives me a much better draft. And my fire, if I loaded the wood stove up full and closed all the dampers after it got rocking, it would still climb and I couldn't control the fire. So I called U.S. Stove Company, who makes a Vogelzang wood stove, and they told me I need to put this guy on here, the barometric damper. Well... I got the barometric damper. The first thing was this thing was stuck. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't move at all. And so I had to sit and fiddle with it, bend it, kind of get it just right. So it would actually move like it's supposed to. So I got it so it moved and it didn't hang up on here and did what it was supposed to do. But then I found that it didn't do anything. Like it still didn't work. It's such a cheap design. It's, it's a pointless thing. So I ended up putting these clips on here because I'd come out on a windy day and find that the wind just blew this open. But if I had this fire roaring and I closed the dampers, this thing should automatically open up a little bit just to kind of help get airflow to cool the flue down so the fire doesn't go out of control. But it never did that, even with setting the, the setting perfectly. So I got this clip on here to keep it closed. Now, when I get it going, if it ever gets away on me, I just simply flip the clip and I can open it up quick and I just do it manually. And that, right, that gets me the, the ability to cool the stove down. When I called to inquire about this issue, 
they had no idea. They, they, they were very not helpful, to say the least, on the issue with too much draft. I got this song and dance about how they can't no longer use the, the dampers that they used to put in the chimneys because the EPA nixed those last week, and, and they know nothing about the barometric dampers that they sell, so they couldn't tell me anything about it. I mean, they, I've called a couple of times with questions, and they were very um, not helpful, to say the least. So to solve the issue with the overdraft, the I think the easiest way to do that would be to make the damper a little more airtight. This thing leaks. So on a when I load this thing full and I get it up to temperature, I get it up to that 400 degrees, 350, 400 degrees, I have to close this thing. I have to close it actually before I get to 400 because the hotter it gets, the harder it is for me to, to choke it down. If I get it past 400 and I pull that lever there all the way out, it'll keep climbing because it's not sealing up well enough. I also didn't add a fresh air intake on the back like they recommend down here uh, because I didn't want it to have more ability to get more air. Now, the wood stove that's in the house, most of my chimneys on the outside, so I have a little bit harder time getting a good draft going than in here. That one there, I can choke it down, and I don't have to worry about it taking off on me. When I pull that lever all the way out, it chokes the fire down and it stops climbing. It might climb a couple of degrees. So my recommendation to you is if you're going to have a longer chimney inside the house, like if you're putting this in the basement and you're having the chimney run all the way through the house and then exiting, you're probably going to run into an overdraft issue. So you're going to want to do something to help mitigate that. That's why I put the fans on the, the chimney and the, the wood stove itself. You might want to consider putting a damper on there because it does bleed a little bit of air through the cracks on the outside. And you can. it also gives you the ability to quick cool it down so it doesn't overfire. So it's a good option for a manual override. I wish it was automatic like it was supposed to be. One more drawback to this wood stove that I don't like is this is where the air comes out. You'll see there's kind of a double wall here. And the air comes out of here from the fan and blows out here. And you can see I bent this over because before that just blew up at an angle. Let's see, get it. Kind of like this. Well, that's kind of a pointless. I mean, that that's really stupid in my opinion. You're not able to get any more heat out of the wood stove by doing that. All you're doing is just moving air around. I've seen other wood stoves that have a shroud that comes over here and then comes down about right here. And then there's holes here. So the air is pushing across the top of this. That's, you know, when it's running, this is really hot. So you're able to get the BTUs, the heat off of there and, and actually get more heat out of your wood stove. So that to me is a big drawback. I bent this down. So at least I've got air flowing like this. So I'm able to help get some of the air off the top of this and maximize my heat. I will say that the Vogelzang seems to be very well built. I got quarter inch steel on top. Um, the firebox is a fairly large firebox. It's nice and deep. Uh, I think it's 22 inches deep, which is a lot deeper than others that I've seen. For what I paid for this wood stove, I feel like it's a uh, entry level wood stove. It's pretty cheap. I think I got it on sale for like 1100 bucks and it was one of the cheaper ones that I found that was capable of the BTUs that this one is allegedly capable of. So for an entry level wood stove, I would say this is a, it's a good buy. If I ever had to replace the wood stove or get another wood stove for another purpose, I would definitely consider the Vogelzang again, but I might consider looking at other options too. It's a good stove, it does what it needs to do. There's just a few things that I wish they wouldn't have overlooked on it. And and the quality thing, especially with like the, the door. And the other the other thing I just remember now too is the there's a little hole in the center here. You can pop it out, push all your ash down into your ash bin down here. Well, one of the first times I pulled that uh plug out of the center there, the gasket fell out. It's kind of a to me, 
Like, that shouldn't have happened. It was after one of the first fires, second fire or something. Pulled it out and the gasket stayed. So I had to get glue, reseal that. Um, there's a few things that were overlooked as far as quality control goes. With that gasket, this door latch being an issue. Um, but overall, I'm pleased. I'm glad I got the wood stoves. I'm going to save quite a bit of money this year on heating. So if you're thinking about buying a wood stove, I wouldn't rule out the Vogelzane. If you're if you're looking for a good budget stove, this might be the, the ticket for you. Uh, again, it's not the worst stove in the world. It's not the best stove in the world either. It's a good entry-level stove. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I try to post a video every few days, different tips and tricks I do around my homestead here and, and product reviews. And I'd like to share them with you. So please hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.